Welcome to AnalystMyth.com. And today I'm going to try to answer some questions I've been getting on YouTube and on the forum about how a revolver can shoot automatic pistol cartridges. It's really quite simple. But before I do that, let me introduce you to the two weapons that I use that take automatic pistol cartridges. This one here is my Smith & Wesson 625 and 45 ACP. It shoots the 45 ACP and also shoots the 45 auto rim. And I'm going to show you both those cartridges and how to set them up. This here is the Smith & Wesson 610, 10mm. It shoots the 10mm auto and the 40 Smith & Wesson. Now the way these pistols accomplish that is it uses this thing called a moon clip. What the moon clip does is it attaches around the base or the rim of the case and holds it like an in-block clip. So you throw the thing in and you pull the thing out all at once. So once they're all fired, the cases come out in one nice little bundle. The nice thing about it is the, the moon clips are fairly cheap, so you can load up five, six hundred rounds, put them on moon clips, and just throw them in a bag and go. Actually, this is probably my preferred handgun for uh, self-defense anyway. But let me change the angle of the camera here, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. I'm going to show you the different cartridges and help to answer some of those questions you guys have. Okay, here's my 625. It fires just like a conventional um, double action revolver. Let's make sure it's a complete safe weapon. Fires on a single action. Also fires double action. But what sets this gun apart is this right here, the moon clip. It makes reloads extremely fast. You just put it on your finger like that, open the cylinder, and drop it in. And once it's fired, and you've expended all your rounds, the whole thing comes out in one chunk, which is nice because you don't have to run all over the range and look for your brass like you do with a 1911 or whatever other kind of 45 you have. So the moon clips are really nice and like I said they're cheap and for instructional purposes only these are dummy rounds. There's no way in the world I'm going to be loading a, a weapon in my garage. And the one thing you absolutely have to be sure of if you're shooting the 45 ACP in this is that you use the moon clips because it hits space off the moon clip. Otherwise the cartridges will set in too deep, you'll get head space problems and you'll start damaging the weapon. Any little bit of momentum on the bolt face here will start doing damage. So let me go ahead and show you again with the 10 millimeter what we got. Now what I have here is my 610. I'm not going to load up a full moon clip and insert it to the weapon and the reason is I don't have any dummy cartridges. But what I will do show you how it works. Here I have a 10 millimeter and here I have a 40 caliber. It's real simple. Take a moon clip, insert the case. And as you can see, they will both head space identically. It's no different than shooting a 38 special and a 357 magnum. Okay, so we can see we have the revolver. It's a complete safe weapon. And bear in mind, I'm not actually chambering these and closing the cylinder and the battery here. I spaced them apart. And the reason why I did this is I want to show you how it head spaces. As you can see, the 40 here will be held back towards here because it uses the moon clip like it would a rimmed case. It head spaces off the moon clip. And same is true for the 10 millimeter. You can see the 10 millimeter is longer, but even though the 40 is shorter, it's going to head space the same. So even if they make 10 millimeter obsolete tomorrow and I can never get 10 millimeter breasts ever again, I can shoot 40 Smith & Wessons in this all day long and not have a single problem with it. 
The only bad thing is, is they don't make a rimmed 10 millimeter. But I'm trying to work on that right now. I think I can convert a 30-30 to it, but it's going to take some um, engineering on my part. Also on a revolver, just so you know, I see a lot of these people out there take them and they snap it shut. That is the worst thing in the world to do to a revolver. What you want to do is take it by this part here, which is called a crane, push it shut with your thumb, and then with your fingers on the other side, index it. And when you hold it open, put my pinky over the hammer and my forefinger with the frame and my two middle fingers to hold the cylinder out. That way, no matter what I'm doing, it's not going to close up on me. Just like that. Now let's look at some of the cartridges of 45 shoots. Okay, what you see directly before you is a 45 auto rim, a 45 ACP, and another 45 auto rim for comparison. If you look at the 45 auto rim, it has quite a rim on it. It's thick, it's very thick. Now the 45 auto rim was developed uh, during World War I because there was, wasn't enough um, 1911s around to be issued, so they made the uh, Smith & Wesson 1917. And then the Smith & Wesson 1917 used half moon clips, which held three rounds, and they also discovered that if they were to make a cartridge specific to that pistol, it would be this, the 45 auto rim. Remington still makes them, and you can get brass either through from Remington at a midway. Also, Starline makes it. Uh, in contrast to 45 ACP, you can see the difference. Now, when we slide these uh, in the background here, we'll zoom out in a minute. Now, probably another question is going to come up: is what's this white stuff on this particular bullet here? That is Teflon tape. That's going to be part of another tutorial in how to lubricate your bullets like the tumble lube type or any conventional cast bullet with Teflon tape instead of using the greasy type of lubricants that are out there. It's an experiment that I'm still developing and so far it works pretty good. So let me zoom out again and I'm going to show you the comparison between the, the whole setup here. Now again for comparison we're looking back at the 10 millimeter moon clip right here. It's a little different than the one I used for my 45. Now over here we have a black talon 40 caliber and here we have a 10 millimeter with a cast bullet. And here we have a 40, a 10, and a 40 just for comparison just to show you that you can use both in, in this particular handgun. It's really nice. It gives the shooter flexibility. It allows the shooter to develop hand loads that he would normally not be able to develop in an automatic because he can fiddle with the uh, seating depth because you have a lot of chamber to deal with. The cylinders are quite long on these. And that also goes with the 45. One of the nice loads for the 45 that I like, I shoot a 300 gram bullet about 700 feet a second, which is really nice. I call them my flying sledgehammers. Those are excellent for camping because they're cast out of line type and they hit like a ton of bricks. So let me go ahead and change the cartridges before you and move back to the 45. Okay, back here again. On this side, we have the 245 auto rims. We have a full moon clip here loaded with 45 ACPs, and we have another 45 ACP that's not in the, uh, the moon clip. These are really nice. It really helps the shooter at the range. Like I said, I can shoot a, up to a 300 grain bullet out of this about 650 to 700 feet a second. These are 230s. My Personal favorite load is the Keith 255 grain bullet made by RCBS. And when you seat it in here, you seat it to the crimp groove, which makes it too long for a magazine, but ideal for the revolver. Now, the 45 auto rims, they eject of a revolver the same way that a standard revolver would, so you have six loose cases. But what I really enjoy about it is putting the 45 ACPs in here and having them come out into one solid unit and I just use a quarter inch drive screwdriver to pop them off instead of buying all these fancy tools. You're going to see these two handguns quite a bit in the videos and you're going to see them 
um, during some of the load development we're planning on doing here in the short while. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.